Hi guys, I'm Serge from Discovering Destinations, and right now we're discovering Coimbra. Let's go check it out. We left Fatima and drove north for about one hour to reach Coimbra. With 460,000 inhabitants, it seems like a small city. However, it's the fourth largest urban center in Portugal, after Lisbon, Porto and Braga. Hi guys, I'm Serge from Discovering Destinations and today we are in Coimbra, which is a city, a small city in Portugal. It's a little bit north, not quite Porto, and it's a little bit higher than Lisbon. And so we're going to be going around and showing you some different sites that we're going to be uh, visiting as well. Everything is concentrated in that little kind of bunker hill over there. And we're going to be going all the way up to the top. And there's also a library up there, a university, really nice views. So it's really worth uh, the energy walking all the way up the hill. So we're going to show you that in just a second. Stay tuned. If time permits, we recommend starting your Coimbra journey from the Santa Clara Bridge. As you just saw, it's a beautiful view of the city. We entered the city at a place called Largo da Portagem. In English, that means toll road. At this point, you'll start to get a sense of Coimbra's architecture with the local shops and the Astoria Hotel. First, we recommend that you explore the pedestrian street called Ferreira Borges. The street changes names a couple of times. However, we recommend going all the way down and back because it's a great display of the old town Coimbra. When touring Portugal in general, make sure to always leave some room in your stomach because you'll come across countless padarias, which are bakeries, and they offer delicious sweet and salty snacks. And it wasn't long in our exploration that Ellie had already found a bakery called Brioza. They had an intelligent display of treats on the street display. And we're convinced that it gets just about everyone walking in. I remained captivated by the tasty display and hadn't even noticed Ellie walking in. She was already placing an order by the time I made my way inside. They allowed us to pick and choose our treats, place them in a cardboard box for us to enjoy later. Once we left Brioza, we continued walking down Ferreira Borges Street and made our way to the commercial place. This is when we noticed the church of São Tiago. We especially love the golden bricks and the multiple arches in the doorways, creating a ripple effect. We 
We continued down the pedestrian street, which by this point was named Praça Oito de Maio, or 8th of May place in English. The street eventually opened up to a square with the Coimbra Town Hall and the Santa Cruz Monastery. Captivated by the outer architecture of the monastery, we decided to enter. And inside we found beautiful details in the arches, plus the traditional Portuguese blue tiles on the walls. Once we left the square, we headed back down Ferreira Borges Street. On the way, we had noticed an arch gate and wanted to have a closer look at it. Turns out it's a medieval stone defensive tower called Almedina Gate or Barbican Gate. In the Middle Ages, Coimbra was divided in upper and lower city, and the city was encircled by a fortified wall, and the Almedina Gateway was the access to the upper city. Once you cross the medieval gate, there's a small square with few merchants and an apparently delicious restaurant called Taberna del Medina, or El Medina Tavern in English, which boasts a 4.7 Google star in reviews. We continued our journey uphill with the help of Quebra Costa Street. We continued on that path until we reached the old Cathedral of Coimbra. It had a similar style to the Santiago church we saw earlier, although this one demonstrated more finesse. On one side, the old cathedral looked like a small fortress with its high battlements. And if you watched our Saint Georges Castle vlog in, from Lisbon, you'll remember that battlements are indentations on the facade. According to us, the most impressive was the north facade, with the remarkable Renaissance style portal called Porta Especiosa, which could translate to the gracious door. The old cathedral also has a tower-like facade with heavy Romanesque decorations of Arabic and pre-Romanesque influences. From this height, we started feeling the university presence. It might have been midterm session for the students because they were all out in the streets chanting and enjoying themselves. It was really fun to see them interact and feel that positive energy. 
Their chants plus our discovery of the old cathedral made our experience much more enjoyable. Just a few more steps and we'll reach the top. Our goal was to visit the famous Joanina Library. Sadly, we arrived a little late as they closed the gate right in front of us. But all was not lost. We managed to score a wonderful sunset from the top. It was a clear and unobstructed view of the lower city, the Mondego River, and the horizon. We don't expect you to follow the same path as we did to make it to the top, and we reckon that there are probably more than one ways to reach the summit. The best advice? Just keep going uphill until you eventually reach the peak. Once it got dark, we carefully made our way back down in search of a restaurant. Our hotel recommended a decent place called Paso do Con. After our meal, we walked around the commercial place and curiously observed what appeared to be local students enjoying themselves while creating music. The next day was going to be eventful as we planned a road trip to a small shyst village called Talasnal located roughly one hour from Coimbra. So we ate a hearty breakfast and headed on the road to Talisnel. All right guys, be sure to subscribe to our channel for more on Portugal as we continue discovering destinations one city at a time. Cheers. <laughs>